Welcome to the Leafy Podcast, helping real estate investors and entrepreneurs grow. Say hello to your hosts, Jennifer Goglorek and Brian Price, founders of Leafy Legal Services, teaching you how to protect your assets, grow your business, and manage your wealth. Let's start the show. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Leafy Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Tammy, the podcast manager. And uh, today we have an amazing guest with us. And uh, hosting today is our beautiful and wonderful Jennifer Gligerich, the COO of Leafy Legal Services. And uh, so I will go ahead and pass it on to her so we can get started. Jennifer? Well, hey guys, hey to all my Leafy podcast listeners today. We have on someone who is an investor relations specialist. So this person's from Austin, Texas. So a fellow Texan like me, a commercial real estate broker with about 15 years of experience. And he's going to help us investors make wise decisions. And in school, he studied government, studied government and business at University of Texas. I can hear the booing from all my Aggie fans right now. Sorry. <laughs> but here we are. So we're going to be talking with Ben Kogut. So Ben, welcome to the show. He's with HGH Investments. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself. What made you decide to go from government and business into what you're doing right now? Uh, it's been quite the journey, but effectively, I followed my heart, followed my uh, passions for commercial real estate, and it kind of led me towards real estate brokerage business that led me towards a real estate investment and syndication business. Ah. Yeah, I've never been so happy in my career. Well, that sounds really good. So you say you're CCIM certified. Remind our viewers what that is, or listeners. listeners. CCIM is a commercial real estate, um, commercial real estate investment member, and it's a um, you know, upper level commercial real estate education. And then I also have an MBA from a program called Acton MBA. Okay. So you're not just some Goomba from up the street. You're somebody who knows what he's talking about, right? Yeah, I try. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about right now. So right now with HGA investments, you help other investment investors find deals and structure deals, right? Yeah, so basically my company, HJH Investments. HJH. It's okay. Yeah, we specialize in buying commercial real estate. It's either like an industrial property or an office property or even shopping centers. And my role on the team is working with private individuals who will invest into the deal with us into a syndication. And then uh, we basically handle everything. We find the deal. We get you in the deal and then we pay you monthly dividends based on the cash flow that comes out of the properties. Mm -hmm. And we give you quarterly reports and everything's transparent. And then uh, upon an exit, um, you'll you know, hopefully uh, make even more money. So that's uh, in a nutshell what we do. Well, that sounds really good. I know right now a lot of people are looking to diversify. And you know what's weird is I have it written in 10 places, H-J-H. And I don't know why I said G. It's H J H like Jennifer. And I couldn't even get that because who knows? Who knows why? Anyway, okay, so tell us, so tell us once they get in, like why okay, so let's say you're an investor and you're doing single family, and right now from things that are happening, you're like, oh God, I really want to diversify. I want to pivot, like pivot. That's what everybody is trying to do right now. Why would why do you think that this is, is a great way for them to just kind of like move into some of their investments into something different? Yeah, this is, uh, you could call it an alternative asset class uh, mm -hmm. to invest in, although it's mm -hmm. commercial real estate. I mean, we all know that that's been around for forever. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the way we do it is we specialize in buying properties that are occupied by high credit tenants mm -hmm. that already have long-term leases in place. Okay. So cash flow is much more predictable because of that situation. Sometimes it's one tenant. Most of the times it's multi-tenant properties. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're buying things at a discount. And so we are able to afford that. We usually pay about 8% annual dividends. So, and that's mm -hmm. paid out every month. Okay. So it's for somebody that uh, wants to own real estate, but doesn't necessarily want to be involved in the day-to-day -day hassles of owning that particular piece of real estate. And they want the cash flow and the, uh, the tax benefits as well. I mean, from cost segregation, I don't know if you guys have talked about it, but there are some yes. massive benefits to owning uh, commercial real estate. And so we pass on all those benefits to our investors 
and um, it's it's going really well. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, we are about to have a cost segregation expert on the show coming up in the next couple of weeks because it is so hot right now. So what I want you to do is walk me through a typical newer investor of you, like make up an avatar like Bob. He has this much to invest. If he invests with us, you know, in general, this is what we're looking at. Now, remember, any numbers that Ben tells us are not guaranteed numbers. There is risk. It's business you know, nothing is guaranteed in this life. As we know, we've went through a very unshaky time right now that no one in the world could have known that, that that would happen. So there are historically incredible investments that took a hit and they're gonna get back on track again, but you can't, you know, uh, no one has a crystal ball to predict a, pa a pandemic, right? So let's just say once we're out of this and things start to settle down, yes, the world's changed a little bit, but not completely. Tell us an average investor. How much would they invest? What would they be looking at each month getting back? Why is that good for them? And why would they want to make that shift? Just to educate me too. Yeah, sure. So uh, in general, let's just say we are going to go out and buy an industrial property, which is what we happen to be uh, under contract on right now. But mm -hmm. a recent deal was um, the avatar of the person, first and foremost, is that they have to be an accredited investor. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming I don't need to define that. No, no, no. We know what an accredited investor is. So accredited investors, mm -hmm. usually it's about $100,000 minimum to mm -hmm. invest in one of our deals. And mm -hmm. the way that we structure it is we will go and we will buy a property somewhere in the 10, like at a 10 cap range. Mm -hmm. And then at that price, we will put debt on the property to leverage the returns to somewhere in the 12 to 14% cash on cash returns. Mm -hmm. And then... Out of that, um, let's say someone puts in that $100,000 investment. Mm -hmm. So that would be an 8% preferred return. Mm -hmm. And that 8% would be $8,000 on that $100,000 investment mm -hmm. divided by 12, which is $666.66 that mm -hmm. is paid on the 15th of every month to mm -hmm. that investor. Right. Then four times a year, so quarterly, there will be a bonus payment on top of that. Our portfolio has been averaging about 10.5% cash on cash returns. So that investor will get about another 2 to 4%, we'll say on average, it's 2.5% additional mm -hmm. uh, every quarter. So they get a, what is that, a few hundred dollars more mm -hmm. on top of that, that uh, monthly check that comes every quarter. So it's real simple. You'll get your K-1 uh, when tax time rolls around. On that, you'll see how much income that you've generated through your uh, through the passive income, and you'll see generally uh, pretty significant um, co uh, tax savings through the you know the accelerated depreciation process that we go through. Mm -hmm. And why do you think it's important right now for investors to be considering this type of investment rather than something that's more active? Why do you think that this is good? Not just not just diversity, but be more specific. Yeah, so really like it has to do with what your personal goals are. You know, mm -hmm. some people want to be active and that's great. If you're somebody that doesn't want to handle anything that has to do with the real estate and you want to work with a professional company that has a great track record that knows how to handle the current situation that we're currently going through in the mm -hmm. this pandemic, that's where we come in. You know, we structure all of our deals with robust uh, reserve accounts so mm -hmm. that in this current situation, we are in a position to help out some of our vulnerable tenants, mostly retail tenants right now, mm -hmm. that yeah. need you know, a couple of months to, to not have to pay rent. So we're able to do that. And in exchange, we're working with them, uh, I guess across the portfolio, we, we waived about $150,000 worth of rents across the portfolio. Mm -hmm. And in exchange, we've added over 100 years worth of lease obligations to mm -hmm. the portfolio. So it's a short-term loss, but a long-term gain. And that way, when the tenants, that helps them survive this, this situation, but then they are also committed to staying for the long term because we're helping them, we've built a relationship with them, and we're trying to go above and beyond to make sure that they survive and not, not only survive, but thrive going mm -hmm. forward. Yeah, and tell us a little bit about the, some of the tax benefits from this, because I know that some investors, they, they worry about it. Well, with passive investing, maybe, I, maybe I'm going to pay more in taxes and then it won't be worth it in the end. So let's talk a little bit about that from what you've seen and some different avenues that they can use or you've seen clients use that have been very beneficial to them. 
So what I focus on are the tax losses through mm -hmm. accelerated depreciation and from the mm -hmm. cost segregation studies. Mm -hmm. It can really vary from property to property. The mm -hmm. deals that I've seen, so I'm an investor as well. I started right. as an investor before I joined the company. Okay. Um, I've seen um, massive tax losses. So let's say someone put in that $100,000. I saw a deal recently. Um, it was, a, you got about $44,000 back in tax mm. losses taken off of your, your tax bill. Oh, wow. So it, it's meaning, it's a very meaningful number. And again, like that is a more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation because first of all, I'm not a CPA. Right. And, you know, everyone's tax situations are different. So right. it just depends on what your situation is. Yeah, but it's good to know that those things are available and to be able to have those conversations. So even if it's not with HJH, but you're talking to someone, you want to be able to bring up those questions, find out who they've worked with as far as CPA go, CPAs go. You can call me. I know a lot of CPAs too. I'm happy to give referrals, just like I'm sure Ben is, and to be able to talk about it. Because sometimes what you hear in various groups and stuff like that, you still want to do your due diligence because there's a lot of noise out there when it comes to any investments or any passive investments you have one person that had a really bad experience but maybe it's because they made a mistake that they don't even realize they made or they were unable to utilize a tool whether it is a entity strategy which we, we do with leafy or it is a type of investing strategy that would have been a little bit better in the way that it was structured you know it, education is key in this but we can't know everything because you can't know what you don't know um, so it is good to talk to, to talk to different people and to go with people who have a track record and get, you know, good referrals from it. And you don't just have to talk to one CPA. You can, you can talk to a couple. Yeah. I'll, I'll add a little bit more to that. It's also, yeah. you know, people that are invested with their IRA accounts. Mm -hmm. There are really nice platforms out there to be able to self-direct your IRA out of the stock market and all the volatility and headaches that come with that into, right. into real estate. So, and there are some massive tax advantages to doing things like that. So you can self-direct your IRA. Uh, there's also other you know, ways to, you can 1031 exchange, which means mm -hmm. that you sold a property and mm -hmm. that you deferred your taxes by exchanging that money into a syndication, which would put mm -hmm. you in a passive position with just passive income. So there's other like ways to, be, to go about getting involved in these deals too. Yeah, and that's good you brought that up. We do SDIRAs and solo 401ks all the time. And then it's like, well, what can I invest with that? And the thing is, well, there's it's like a whole different world of what you can invest with with two, those two self-directed options if you have the right investment teams to kind of steer you. And like you said, it's what do you want? You know, someone who's really aggressive and new in the game is going to want different things than someone who already has their money and is looking to cash out and just have something to live on retirement and leave a legacy. So, and there's every single type of investor in between people who need a mix of both of that, you know? So there you go. Anything else you want to tell me about deals that are coming up or things that maybe uh, investors are wanting to keep, keep their ear on the ground about, uh, you know, just think about coming up as far as types of investments that you've seen is it just you said retail and commercial that probably scares a lot of people but it's interesting that you've been able to weather the storm with that um, what other type of investments yeah so um, we're going to be focused more on industrial industrial he's going forward we are under contract on three more deals right now uh, putting together little partnerships and basically the, the cash flow is guaranteed by high credit tenants Mm -hmm. So who are doing just fine during this particular pandemic that we're going through. So the, the cash flow is still consistent. Mm -hmm. um, that, 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 that's kind of the direction I see us, you know, more on that direction. Okay. So you're going to be moving. So you'll still have your retail, but now you're going to do for more, I mean, more industrial rather than commercial. So that, that's interesting. There's a lot of people making pivots. I know we just talked about somebody who we just talked to some storage experts who are like, we've done great during this time on storage. And I thought, really, you would think that storage would be the first thing people would give up, but it's not, that's not how it panned out. And sometimes you have to go through it to realize what would be good because everything the quote unquote experts said didn't pan out. 
you know, there's always those interesting things that happen um, with the market. So besides helping your tenants during COVID, what other things have you been able to do during this last time that have changed your mind? Is there anything like that that you've thought, well, I didn't think this would happen the way it did. Um, and this is probably what, what we'll do going forward besides industrial. You know, it's been more, uh, more of the conversation has been around the retail shopping centers that we own. Mm -hmm. And there's a few realizations that have come out of this. You know, when you go to a shopping center uh, mm -hmm. in general, you're not really shopping. It's mostly, mm -hmm. you know, services, restaurants, medical, things like that. Uh, there are certainly exceptions to that, but the things that we buy are uh, Amazon resistant is what we're looking for. Right. And so um, that trend will continue to move forward. Uh, we're, I'm very grateful that, you know, we are in a position where we were able to, to, to help our tenants out by giving them some rent relief or rent abatement or deferment. So basically, instead of paying rent now, they'll pay it in 2021. That's some of the things that we've been able to, to help people with. And then early on, we were able to coach the smaller tenants through how to obtain the PPP loans and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so that has had a trickle down effect that has helped us maintain uh, the, the cash flows on the, on the assets too. So there's been other tools that we've been doing, but those are the main ones. Oh, really? That's good. How did you find that with PPP? I mean, that is a process. I talked to the SBA today, as a matter of fact, and over 5 million people have applied just for EIDL. And that is up from mid April, which was 3 million and at 3 million that had surpassed any of the disasters that the disaster team had worked on. So it's, it's, it's like overwhelming. I know. Uh, yeah, the chairman this morning said it's the largest economic incentive package that this country's ever had. And that's yeah. no surprise at all. And it was definitely needed. And um, I'm afraid that, you know, the, the worst is not behind us, unfortunately. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're keeping our eye on that and preparing for what, you know, possibilities may occur with that. Yeah. Do you have any um, tips or strategies for people who might hear that from you and go, what? <laughs> what? Huh? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> not, nothing rocket science, but just, you know, prepare for, you know, prepare for the worst, mm -hmm. you know, be prepared. Hopefully it's not the worst, but be prepared for it. Right. Yeah. So it depends on what your situation is, but definitely, you know, have that money sitting aside for a rainy day. Make mm -hmm. sure that you're looking, you know, forward. You know, I think that the period of time they're in right now is going to accelerate just about everything. So if a, if a tenant was already struggling and sort of coming on the down downward, it's going to accelerate their demise, unfortunately. And anything mm -hmm. that was on the upswing is going it, to, it's, they're just going to explode right now. And so it depends mm -hmm. on what side of that pendulum are, but, but don't forget, like, you know, when you go and buy a stock on, uh, you know, on wall street, that at that particular moment, you think that you're making a smart decision by selling. And at mm -hmm. that exact same moment, that buyer is thinking they're making a smart decision by buying. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, mm -hmm. it, you know, it depends on what your goals are. Yeah. And that's an interesting way to put it because it doesn't matter which side you're on. There are smart things that you can do right now. And there are ways you can think about things, even if it's just a mindset shift to make sure that you weather this well. So I like the way that you put that because that's important for people to know because we, you know, on our end, we've talked to investors in very beginning, people who are freaking out, others who are like, this is going to be great. And some of the, this is going to be great people have changed their mind. Some of the, this is going to be bad. They've changed their mind. They're like, yeah, I want to go forward. So it really is just keep your mindset, be able to make pivots. This is a time of change. And, but these volatile times are the times that most people who get wealthy, get wealthy out of these times. So it can be you <laughs> very easily. It can be you. You just got to, listen, decide what you want to do. Anyway, yeah. well, we've been talking to Ben Kogut with HJH Investments, and you can go to hjhinvestments.com to uh, talk to him more and to find out more about this if you're an accredited investor, or if you're just someone who wants to become an accredited investor and you want to know what that's all about and what the, this other world of investments is, then go and uh, you know learn a little bit about it. But we're here at the end. I want to thank you, Ben, for being here with our Leafy Podcasters, and thank you so much. And Tammy, take us away.
All right. Yes, thanks again, Ben, for being on with us today. And thank you, Jennifer, for hosting. Um, I will have all of Ben's links in our show notes so that you can find him and, uh, and get in touch with him. If you would like to get in touch with me, if you'd like to leave a comment or you have a suggestion about the podcast, please email me at Tammy, T-A-M-M-Y, at leafylegalservices.com, and I will get right back to you. And uh, if you are looking for us on social media or anywhere you can hear a podcast, we are at Leafy Legal, and we would love it if you would uh, drop us a comment, um, give us a rating. So thank you again so much for listening, and uh, we hope you enjoyed, and we uh, look forward to the next time. So have a great day. Bye-bye. Attention real estate investors and entrepreneurs. Did you know that real estate investors are a primary target for lawsuits? According to the National Survey of the Court data, 25% of Americans risk being sued in their lifetime. However, if you are a real estate investor, you have a 95% chance of being sued in the next 20 years. Leafy Legal Services helps you protect your assets and strategically grow your business and wealth. Leafy Legal Services are experts at the Series LLC and Delaware Statutory Trust. Trust, two of the newest and most ideal legal structures for real estate investors. Leafy Legal Services have the most personalized and affordable solutions for setting up LLCs. Property owners are always at risk when it comes to their assets. Anonymity is so important. If you own just a rental house and you own your home, you have to protect yourself and your properties from any potential legal issues. Leafy Legal Services have the right solutions to make sure you are happy and feel secure. They offer cost-effective documentation that suits their clients' needs. For a free consultation and ebook, visit leafylegalservices.com. They are waiting to hear from you. Leafylegalservices.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Don't wait. Take action now. Leafylegalservices.com. Protect your assets, grow your business, and manage your wealth.